The Tale of Timmy Tiptoes Short Stories for Kids Today we have a book named The Tale of Timmy Tiptoes by Beatrix Potter Short Stories for Kids. I think they're so pretty. I hope you guys really enjoy it. I love it. Please give this video a like if you enjoy it and don't forget to subscribe for more stories. Thank you, reading. So, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a little fat, comfortable gray squirrel called Timmy Tiptoe. He had a nest thatched with leaves in the top of a tall tree. And he had a little squirrel wife called Goody. Goody. Timmy Tiptoe sat out, enjoying the breeze. He whisked his tail and chuckled. Little wife, Goody, the nuts are ripe. We must lay up a store for winter and spring. Goody Tiptoes was busy pushing moss under the thatch. The nest is so snug, we shall be sound asleep all winter. Then we shall wake up all the thinner when there is nothing to eat in springtime, replied prudent Timothy. Working alone. When Timmy and Goody Tiptoe came to the nut thicket, they found other squirrels were there already. Timmy took off his jacket and hung it on a twig. They worked away quietly by themselves, storing nuts in hollows. Every day they made several journeys and picked quantities of nuts. They carried them away in bags and stored them in several hollow stumps near the tree where they had built their nest. Storing in a high tree When these stumps were full, they began to empty the bags into a hole high up a tree that had belonged to a woodpecker. The nuts rattled down, down, down inside. How shall you ever get them out again? It is like a money box, said Goody. I shall be much thinner before springtime, my love, said Timmy Tiptoes, peeping into the hole. Silvertail They did collect quantities because they did not lose them. Squirrels who bury their nuts in the ground lose more than half because they cannot remember the place. The most forgetful squirrel in the wood was called Silvertail. He began to dig, and he could not remember. And then he dug again and found some nuts that did not belong to him. And there was a fight. And other squirrels began to dig. The whole wood was in commotion. A bird sings. Unfortunately, just at this time, a flock of little birds flew by, from bush to bush, searching for green caterpillars and spiders. There were several sorts of little birds, twittering different thongs. The first one sang, Who's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? And another sang, Little bite of bread and no cheese? Little bit, ah, uh, bread and no cheese. Tying bags of nuts. The squirrels followed and listened. The first little bird flew into the bush where Timmy and Goody Tiptoes were quietly tying up their bags, and it sang, Who you's been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? Timmy Tiptoes went on with his work without replying. Indeed, the little bird did not expect an answer. It was only singing its natural song, and it meant nothing at all. Chasing Timmy. But when the other squirrels heard that song, they rushed upon Timmy Tiptoes and cuffed and scratched him and upset his bag of nuts. The innocent little bird which had caused all the mischief flew away in a fright. Timmy rolled over and over and then turned tail and fled towards his nest, followed by a crowd of squirrels shouting, Who's been digging up my nuts? Pushed into the hole. They caught him and dragged him up the very same tree, where there was the little round hole, and they pushed him in. The hole was much too small for Timmy Tiptoe's figure. 
They squeezed him dreadfully. It was a wonder they did not break his ribs. We will leave him here till he confesses, said Silvertail Squirrel, and he shouted into the hole, Who's been digging up my nut? Lying on the nut. Timmy Tiptoes made no reply. He had tumbled down inside the tree, upon half a peck of nuts belonging to himself. He lay quite stunned and still, looking for Timmy. Goody Tiptoes picked up the nut bags and went home. She made a cup of tea for Timmy. But he didn't come and didn't come. Goody Tiptoes passed a lonely and unhappy night. Next morning she ventured back to the nut bushes to look for him. But the other unkind squirrels drove her away. She wandered all over the wood, calling, Timmy Tiptoes, Timmy Tiptoes, oh, where is Timmy Tiptoes? Tucked in bed. In the meantime, Timmy Tiptoes came to his senses. He found himself tucked up in a little moss bed, very much in the dark, feeling sore. It seemed to be underground. Timmy coughed and groaned because his ribs hurted him. There was a chirpy noise, and a small striped chipmunk appeared with a nightlight and hoped he felt better. It was most kind to Timmy Tiptoes. It lent him its nightcap, and the house was full of provisions. The chipmunk. The chipmunk explained that it had rained nuts through the top of the tree. Besides, I found a few buried. It laughed and chuckled when it heard Timmy's story. While Timmy was confined to bed, it ticed him to eat quantities. But how shall I ever get out through that hole unless I thin myself? My wife will be anxious. Just another nut or two nuts. Let me crack them for you, said the chipmunk. Timmy Tiptoes grew fatter and fatter. Goody gathered. Now Goody Tiptoes had set to work again by herself. She did not put any more nuts into the woodpecker's hole, because she had always doubted how they could be got out again. She hid them under a tree root. They rattled down, down, down. Once, when Goody emptied an extra big bagful, there was a decided squeak. The next time Goody brought another bag full, a little striped chipmunk scrambled out in a hurry. Meeting Mrs. Hacky. It is getting perfectly full up down stairs. The sitting room is full and they are rolling along the passage. And my husband, Chippy Hacky, has run away and left me. What is the explanation of these showers of nuts? I'm sure I beg your pardon. I did not know that anybody lived here, said Mrs. Goody Tiptoes. But where is Chippy Hacky? My husband, Timmy Tiptoes, has run away too. I know where Chippy is. A little bird told me, said Mrs. Chippy Hacky. Listening at the hole. She led the way to the woodpecker's tree, and they listened at the hole. Down below there was a noise of nutcrackers, and a fat squirrel voice and a thin squirrel voice were singing together. My little old man and I fell out. How shall we bring this matter about? Bring it about as well as you can. And get you gone, you little old man. Discussing what to do. You could squeeze in through that little round hole, said Goody Tiptoes. Yes, I could, said the chipmunk, but my husband, Chippy Hacky, bites. Down below there was a noise of cracking nuts and nibbling. And then the fat squirrel voice and the thin squirrel voice sang. For the diddlum day. Day diddle dum dee. Day diddle diddle dum day. Timmy sees Goody. 
Then Goody peeped in at the hole and called down, Timmy Tiptoes! Oh, fie, Timmy Tiptoes! And Timmy replied, Is that you, Goody Tiptoes? Why, certainly. He came up and kissed Goody through the hole. But he was so fat that he could not get out. Chippy Hacky was not too fat, but he did not want to come. He stayed down below and chuckled. Timmy goes home. And so it went on for a fortnight. Till a big wind blew off the top of the tree and opened up the hole and let in the rain. Then Timmy Tiptoe came out and went home with an umbrella. Chippy camps out. But Chippy Hacky continued to camp out for another week, although it was uncomfortable. At last, a large bear came walking through the wood. Perhaps he also was looking for nuts. He seemed to be sniffing around. A bear looks in. Chippy Hacky went home in a hurry. Chippy's cold. And when Chippy Hacky got home, he found he had caught a cold in his head. And he was more uncomfortable still. Timmy locks store. And now Timmy and Goody Tiptoes keep their nut store fastened up with a little padlock. Bird sings to chipmunks. And whenever that little bird sees the chipmunks, he sings, who lies? Been digging up my nuts? Who's been digging up my nuts? But nobody ever answers. The end. Good job, friends. Thank you so much for reading with me. Bye, I'll see you next time.